Succulents are famous for the way they grow lots of offshoots. You may want to encourage these to grow for propagation, various succulent art projects, to sell, or to simply get beautiful large clusters growing. It is, for the most part, quite easy to do. Most succulents will grow offshoots and many will grow them without any extra input from us. But there are some that grow few to none offsets and will need intervention if you want them to grow more. In this video, we'll have a look at different ways of encouraging succulents to produce more offshoots, when is the best time to do it and how to force those that typically don't have many offshoots to grow some. Back in April, I topped the plants in this tray. They were growing leggy or etiolated due to lack of light as I forgot them at the back of a very shaded greenhouse. It is now 21st of June and I will shortly show you how these succulents reacted to being topped or beheaded. Topping is one of the best ways to force succulents into growing extra offshoots they would otherwise not have grown. It will have the same effect on most succulents, though the amount of offshoots or offsets will differ from succulent to succulent. Some may grow loads, while others will only manage a couple. The amount, size and speed at which offshoots grow will also depend on the amount of nutrients available to the plant. Producing a lot of new growth requires heaps of energy. If the succulent you're topping is very much root bound, it would help greatly to repot it in a bigger pot with fresh succulent potting mix in order to provide all of this extra energy it will require. The new offshoot should appear even in root bound plants after topping, but they may be slow to grow. Here's the same tray two months later and look at all the little babies popping up on those long stems. It is currently winter here in Australia and so the growth is pretty small as many of these plants slow down dramatically during the cooler months. If I top these at the beginning of spring, all the offshoots would be double in size. I'm very impressed with this Echoviria pearl for Nuremberg stem and all its babies. And look at these Sedaviria my island. So many offshoots. This will become a lovely dense plant once the warmer weather returns. For comparison, check out this one succulent in the same tray I haven't topped. There's not one offshoot on that stem. But over here we have the same succulent topped, and we also have babies. If this little sedum adolfi didn't have the top of the rosette chopped off, none of these offsets would have appeared. Let's have a look at more examples as it's quite fascinating how different succulents respond to topping. This one is Crapto Petulum Purple Delight. Here we're looking at Echeveria bluebird I've topped in April in the same video about leggy succulents. The bluebird does not produce offsets much but look at all these babies. This is definitely thanks to chopping the top off and if you have a succulent that typically grows solitary rosettes, topping will encourage offshoots to grow. I wanted a more bushy Aeonium Schwarzkopf and so I cut the few rosettes off. This is the result and it took about a year for these rosettes to grow this big. And it all started just like this. Some topped succulents like this variegated Crusula perforata will grow more of shoots from the cut point but others can have them pop up all over their stem. In this next part, I'll show you how to top succulents as not all are easy due to low stems and tight growth. We're going to do this Agavoids Hybrid and Aeonium Sambas, which one of my customers requested because hers is not growing any offshoots at all. 
In my experience, it's best to behead succulents in a way that leaves a few leaves on the stem, especially if it's a single stem like this. Sometimes they'll grow new offshoots even without leaves, but there is a good chance the stem will die off. The reason for this is photosynthesis and without any leaves whatsoever, the bare stem will have trouble processing sunlight into nutrients and can die as a result. I'm taking a few leaves off to create a small stem, then I'll leave the head to dry for about a day and after that it will be ready for planting. I'm going to leave the bottom bit for now and report once the new offshoots appear. This particular echeveria is too chunky and compact for scissors so I'm going to use a fishing line. Floss will do the job as well. The trick here is to not go too high as the head can just fall apart into leaves. I've done this mistake many times. Instead wrap the thin string of your choice around the rosette as low as possible but make sure there are a few leaves at the bottom. It's a bit of a struggle as the fishing line is sharp but we have success at last. Same again, take a few leaves off and leave to dry before putting up. You can save the leaves and pop them in a tray. Many succulents have the ability to grow a whole new plant from just a single leaf. And that's how you top succulents. Just one more thing, topping or beheading succulents should be done only during their growing season. Many, except a few, are dormant in winter and won't grow much, if at all, during the coldest months. Spring is the best time to top. Here we have a few Graptopetalum purple delight that were once the same size. The plant on the left was never reported while the rest was. And look at the difference in size and offshoots. Because the reported plants have more nutrients available thanks to the extra space for the roots, they are much more likely to grow lots of offsets. I don't think this little rootbound purple delight would ever produce offshoots if I kept it in that tiny pot. Let's have a look at another example. Both of these are Havothia cuspidata. The difference in amount of pups is purely down to reporting. The reported cuspidata has an insane amount of offshoots. Compare that to the smaller pot, I can confidently say that the difference reporting makes is clear. Most succulents have evolved to process energy from direct sun through photosynthesis. They will always grow best outdoors in enough light. When good light is lacking, it will affect the offset growth. Even shade tolerant succulents will grow more offshoots in brighter light. I often hear people complain that their indoor succulents hardly produce new leaves, let alone offshoots. The reason is that most houses don't get enough light for succulents to grow well. The shade tolerant succulents tend to just about survive. The sun loving succulents often die indoors. If you want to encourage offshoots to grow, make sure your succulent has an appropriate level of light. Quality succulent potting mix will always make succulents produce more offshoots. It will have the right pH and nutrients which will encourage growth of the plant itself as well as offshoots. Potting mix that's either too well draining or too heavy can inhibit growth and result in fewer offshoots. Many people I talk to about succulents are incredibly worried about watering them. While it is true some succulents can die from overwatering, they can also die from lack of water. When succulents are underwatered and think they are in drought, they'll conserve their growing energy and stop producing offshoots. I have this rule and I think it's a good one. Succulents will get just the right amount when you water well once the potting mix has dried out from previous watering. This should provide enough water to sustain succulents, but not enough for fungal disease like rot to take hold. It should also encourage good offshoot growth. And that's it for today. 
I really hope that some of you found this video useful and if you want to add anything to this video or want to ask a question, you can comment below. To learn more about succulents, hit the subscribe button or go to succulentgrowingtips.com. Thank you very much for watching.